In the last lecture, we covered Gauss's law and electric potential. So we started from the <coughs> Gauss's Gauss's law, and we defined electric potential. So, the Gauss's law that we wrote was integral on a closed surface E dot dA is equal to 4 pi k integral on a volume and rho x dQ x. This was the integral form and with the help of divergence theorem we converted this into differential form which was divergence of E and this is equal to K 4 pi rho. This was the differential form. And then after this we defined the electric potential and the electric potential was phi of x equals a summation on i and k q i by x minus x i absolute and this we wrote in integral form is integral k rho of x prime and d cube x prime divided by x minus x prime this was the integral form we also use the relation or define the relation that electric field will always be the variation of that potential. You can write in terms of V or in terms of phi. So it will be minus del phi. And this is equal to E of x and this is integral k rho x prime and x minus x prime divided by x minus x prime q and d q x prime this is equal to minus del and phi of x. Electric field is the negative variation of potential. It's the negative gradient of potential. <laughs> then for the fields for which we are having the path integral because this is the space variation. So if we are having E dot dl and this is a path integral, means closed loop integral or closed path integral. This we can also write as path integral E dot ds where ds and dl are the length elements. If this work is independent of the path. E dot ds is also work. You know this. Because f equal to q e. So f dot ds is work. So here this is the force per unit charge. So if you skip the unit, then this is work. If the work around the closed path is equal to zero, then such fields you are called conservative fields and from the Stokes theorem if you apply on this one you will get 
that the kernel of such fields will be equal to zero. And you call them conservative. Conservative fields. Right? So after this one, we will now start with our today's lecture. And this lecture is on the Poisson's and Laplace equations. So starting from the Poisson and Laplace equations. Now we know that E is equal to minus gradient of phi of x. So I can write that divergence of E divergence of E is equal to the divergence of gradient of phi and divergence of E you know that what this is equal to. So I can write that del square pi is equal to means the divergence of a gradient will always give you del square which is uh, you know that the Laplacian del square pi will be equal to the minus sign and then divergence of E was equal to k4 phi rho. So k4 phi rho. And this is the Poisson's equation. This you call the Poisson's equation. Now if you are in a region where rho is equal to zero, you are in a region where you are not enclosing any charge. Then rho is equal to zero and your equation del square phi will be equal to zero. Like you are not enclosing the charge, then del square phi is equal to zero and this equation you call Laplace equation and the rest of our course we will be solving the Laplace equation. You know in uh, Cartesian coordinates in one dimension this is very easy to solve. It will give you equation of a straight line because you integrate this side and this side. Then the integral of this side will give you del phi and here you will get a constant. You integrate again, then this will give you phi and this will give you constant time variable and another constant. So y equals mx plus c, straight line form. So it will give you a straight line which has no information. But when you will solve this equation in spherical polar coordinates, there is a huge information inside this equation. Okay, now the solution of this equation, if you would like to solve this equation, then phi of x is the solution of this equation. What should be the value of phi? The value of phi is this one. This is equal to the value of phi is this one. So phi will be here. The value of phi, we will have to prove that this phi is actually the solution of the Laplace equation. So let's start with this one. How we can prove this? We know about a uh, few things and let's start with it. That rho of x we have already defined is this is equal 
to Q delta x minus x prime. We have defined this. Rho of x, which is the volume charge, is the charge delta we have introduced. So the dimension of delta is always the reciprocal of its domain. And here it's a three-dimensional setup, three-dimensional data. So it is charge per unit volume. So rho of x, we know that it is equal to this, and about phi, we know that phi is equal here. We have written phi to be equal to this. So for all charges, I have written this summation. Now I can write this thing for a single charge as kq over x minus x prime, right? Here we will have to write prime here. So this will be, you can say, put these values. So I can write that minus, minus, del square minus or keep the minus the other side del square phi is equal to del square and put the value of phi so phi is k q by x minus x prime epsilon And this is now equal to what we know. We know that del square phi from here is equal to minus k4 pi rho. And I know the value of rho as well from here. Rho is q delta x minus x prime. So let me do this thing here. That del square del square phi is equal to minus k 4 pi so that I can write minus k 4 pi and for rho I can write q delta x minus x prime can I write like this? Yes. Then I know that what about del square? What about phi? Del square and for phi I can write this value which is here. So this is equal del square k q divided by x minus x prime. Okay, x minus x prime in absolute is equal to minus 4 pi k q delta x minus x prime. Now you know that k q is cancelling with k q. So del square of 1 over x minus x prime is equal to minus 4 pi delta x minus x prime right that square is 1 over x minus x prime minus 4 pi delta x minus x prime now what's the definition of delta when x will not be equal to x prime then this should give you 0. When x will not be equal to x prime, this should be equal to 0. So I say that if x will not be equal to x prime, then delta x minus x prime will be equal to 0. This implies that del square 1 over x minus x prime is equal to 0 for x not equal to x prime. Right?
So now how I will prove this thing? I will have to prove this because I know the Laplacian